what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1988 Polsky Fiat 126P. Behind me is a 0.7 liter two-cylinder engine and down below is a four-speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here 126p for one main reason this is the people's car of poland and we'll talk more about that in just a second but before we get on to anything else i have a website zachpradle.com where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin bottle sticker both with free shipping you could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what i'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's talk about what Polsky means. You've heard of Fiat, but you might not have heard of Polsky. So throughout the entire 20th century, almost every country besides America was struggling to make a people's car, something that was affordable, could be made in high volume, and essentially motorize a country. Us Yankees, we had the Ford Model T. And so every country after that wanted something similar. That's where we got the Volkswagen Beetle. That's where we got the Lada. And for Poland, they wanted something similar. So they went to Fiat and said, hey, we would like to build your little 126. We'd like to license out the manufacture of a 126. So they said, great, let's do it. So this is a Polish built Fiat 126. It was built under the license from Fiat. And that's where the P at the end of 126 comes from, as well as the Polski name. This was the people's car of Poland and they made over 4 million of them. Over in Poland, these are less than a dime a dozen. But here in America, you just don't see them because we never got them. Let's get back to that little two cylinder engine around the back. It makes 26 horsepower. And the interesting thing is that this engine was actually new for 19 1987. Now this is a 1988, but in 1987, they actually switched to a Polish built engine. This engine was built and manufactured in Poland, where previously they were still using the Italian made engines and shipping them to Poland. They also switched to water cooled engines. So this engine is water cooled, which was not what they had done in years prior. Now actually driving it, <laughs> Don't expect to go anywhere too quick, but hey, that's all right, it's a Fiat. Like I said, paired to a four-speed manual transmission, first gear is actually still unsynchronized, which this has to be one of the latest cars ever manufactured to have no synchro for first, but the actual shifter throw feels good. However, the pedal box is actually off to the right, so it's a little hard for someone as big as me to drive this car. Last but not least, of course, the Polsky Fiat 126P is rear wheel drive. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior, what you get in here. Well, in front of me, I have a little gauge cluster. On the left is all of my warning lights. Then in the center, I do get a speedometer. Then off to the right, I have my little fuel gauge. And I do have these little bar sensors with a diagram of all four wheels. Very, very interesting. The steering wheel, obviously I don't get an airbag. However, it does say Fiat right in the center. And around the gauge cluster, I do have my hazard switch, lighting options, and fog lights which are nice little options here in the Fiat. I don't have anything to the left of the gauge cluster on the door. I do have smokers windows I can't open. That's the only way I'm getting a breeze today, as well as I do have cranks for the windows. Moving into the center, I do have two vents. Now these vents actually pull air from underneath the hood. However, the little door that allows that to happen is stuck shut right now. So I am boiling like a pig on this hot summer July day, but that's okay. Then I do have my defroster and things like that. And I do have a radio. However, the radio has since stopped working. Moving on to the center console, I do get a cubby up front and the shifter. Now this is not the stock shift knob. I will show you what the stock shift knob looks like. Very, very cool. And it is a four speed like I said, the shifter throw actually feels really nice. I'm pleasantly enjoying it. Now down below the shifter, there are two very interesting pull tabs. One of them is the choke and the other one is actually to start the car. So you do turn the key forward and then you pull this and that is actually for the starter motor. It's basically a pull start. Then I do get my handbrake finishing out the center console, meaning there are no cup holders in the Polsky Fiat 126P. 
So unfortunately, it fails the big friggin' bottle test. Back behind the center console, there is this little switch, and this is actually for the heater. So of course it pulls heat off of the engine, and these are the different settings that you get, and the heat just kind of meanders its way into the cabin, comes through from around the shifter, and other points like that. The seats are decently comfortable. They stop about mid-back for me, which is hilarious. They're very, very small like the rest of this car. And actually, this car ended up getting a nickname in Poland, of Maluch. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly and I apologize if I'm not, which literally translates to the small one. This was like everyone's small little friend. So the seats definitely reflect that. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so something helpful that the 126P does is that the entire front seat comes forward, not just the backrest, which is really, really nice. Just kind of step in here. And now I'm back here. My hair is touching this like woven sweater roof liner that you're seeing. Kind of interesting there. Um, me being a big American, I would not fit back here very pleasantly. However, this was the backseat solution for many people of the era. Tons and tons of people shared this experience of the back seat. Put your kids back here, your dog back here, whatever it is. It was hard to buy a car in the 1970s and 80s in Poland. In the early 70s, there was only about 500,000 cars in Poland as a country. And so getting one, especially with the communist rule, was very, very hard. You didn't really have your choice or luxury of vehicles. So this was the backseat that people got, not because it was the most luxurious backseat or the backseat of choice, it was just the backseat of the car that you got. So kind of interesting there. Now we don't have a trunk behind us, but we actually do have some cargo storage up front. Remember this is a rear engine car. So let's go talk about that. All right, so because it is rear engine, we do get this front compartment. Normally this spare tire would be down in front. However, the owner had to get a new battery and the battery was too large to accommodate this being down there. But however, this was the little storage area you got up front. You got a little bag for your windshield wiper fluid and you could hold some tools up here. But other than that, nothing too crazy. However, very, very cool feature. And this is that door that I was talking about. This is where the cold air comes into the cabin, which is very, very cool. It has a little cage around it. So I guess no baseballs will fly inside the air vents, but other than that, it's not blocking much. Now we got to talk about the looks and this is mostly unchanged from the Italian 126 Fiat. However, I love how innocent and small it looks. And there's just something about seeing a little vehicle like this that's just, it's so special not only to me, but to millions of people. And that to me is the coolest thing in the world and I definitely love the way it looks. This thing stops traffic, not only because it's slow, but because everyone looks at it and tries to figure out what the heck it is. I love that about it. Another thing I found really interesting about the 126P is that these are all of the keys you got from the factory when you bought one. One is for the ignition, one is for the doors, one is for the trunk. These these are all different keys that all came originally for the 126P. But let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Polish built Fiat 126P? Well, this is the coolest car ever. I love driving foreign people's cars. Like I said, this car was designed, built and manufactured to give the people of Poland the opportunity to own their own car for not that expensive and to utilize Poland's roads. This car was built out of necessity and the people came to know and love it. It has back seats, not for any insurance reasons, but because this was probably your only car and people have family members, you gotta take them around. This car has a two cylinder engine because that was the easiest thing to manufacture. That was the best thing to manufacture. Most of the glass on this car is flat, so it was easy to manufacture. This is quite frankly the solution to a problem, but the people of Poland have embraced it as one of their own. I was lucky enough to visit Poland six years ago, spend a couple days in Krakow, and I loved it. I love the Polish people. You know, throughout the 20th century, Poland kind of got screwed over by a lot of people. Obviously the Germans, but also then they didn't really get a say in their future after World War II and they were a communist country really until about 1990. So this car was built under the communist rule in Poland. And so what happens to a country when they just get punched so many times 
they become resilient. Odds are the kid that got bullied the most in school is probably the funniest. He's probably the most successful. There's that old saying of pressure makes diamonds. And so that Polish mentality is echoed here in this 126P. No, it's not the fastest. It's not the most handsome car ever built, but it just keeps going. It keeps fighting just like the Polish people have for the last several hundred years. This thing will fight until it hears the bell ring. And then honestly, it'll probably throw a couple more punches after that. I love that fighting spirit. Times might be tough, but that doesn't mean you have to give up on what means the most to you. And what means the most to this car is getting people from A to B. Daniel, the owner of this one, drove it almost an hour to this review. And you know what? He's gonna drive it an hour home. And this car might not be happy about that. The two cylinder might be screaming on the highway, but it's gonna do it. And it's gonna see the light at the end of the tunnel. Cause there always is some light at the end of the tunnel. It might be dim, but if I know anything, the people of Poland will be fighting towards that light. I love it. I love this scrappy little car. Huge thank you to Daniel for letting me take this thing out. This was such, not only a cool driving experience, but just a lesson in geopolitics. I love it. It's so fascinating to me. And this is one of the coolest cars I've ever driven. He actually imported this directly from Poland, from an older gentleman who would just drive it to church on Sundays. And now it's tearing up the streets in Chicago, one of the largest populations of Polish people. Interestingly enough, outside of Poland, Chicago has the most Polish people. So that's another little fact you can learn today. But huge thank you to Daniel. I can't thank him enough. He's absolutely awesome. I can't say enough good things about him and this car. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.